Hello, I'm Natalie Bright with the Olathe Chamber of Commerce. This interview is being conducted on behalf of the Johnson County Public Policy Council, comprised of the Chambers of Commerce in Johnson County and the Kansas City Chamber. Jointly, we host a site, VoteJoco.com, a nonpartisan site where voters can learn more about candidates for our public office. Many of the candidates we'll be interviewing have completed candidate questionnaires that can also be found on the VoteJoco.com. We have with us today, Senator Rob Olson, who's running for re-election in Senate District 23. The district is located in the city of Olathe with Northside starting at 127th Street down to the southern tip touching 175th Street. On the east from Flom to the west side being a bit jagged with it starting at K7 on the north end and following slightly down to Woodland. Thank you, Senator Olson, for joining us today to share with our members and visitors to VoteJoco.com more about you and what your priorities will be, will be if reelected. We want to start today's conversation by spending about three to four minutes with us, having you tell us a little bit more about you and why you're choosing to run again in District 23. So Rob, you wanna let us know? Sure, love to. Thanks, Natalie. Uh, I wanna thank the Chamber for having me. First, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of work still to be done here in the state of Kansas in the 23rd district. Uh, I think with the pandemic we've had hit us, we're going to see we need someone with experience. Uh, the next, you know, couple of years are going to be really tough financially for the state because of the lost revenue. It's hard to make that revenue. Uh, there's really no way. And so you need someone that's experienced to get the state back on track and get the, the coffers running again and hopefully balance the budget and you need someone that understands uh, their fiscal responsibility, uh, how to make the cuts, or where we need to find the money to get us back to a balanced budget. So that's one of the biggest reasons. Also, my biggest concern too right now is the kids being out of school. We just heard today uh, the state school board is uh, uh, voted to open the schools back up normal. I'm hoping that's the case. It's time to get these school kids back to school and uh, get get their lives back to normal because uh, I think they've gotten uh, they're a little behind from last year. I know they've enjoyed the free time and uh, the summertime, but I think it's time that we get back to normal. I think it's better for their mental health. I think it's better for their academic health. And, you know, I think it's time that we start to look forward to seeing how we can get things back to normal and get the state back open 100%. So them are the reasons that I'm running this time. So thank you. Thank you, Senator Olson. I appreciate that. Okay, these next few questions will focus on some key business issues that our members have told us are important to them. If you could spend approximately two minutes responding to each of these, that will allow us some time at the end for you to make a closing statement and keep us just below that 30 minutes. Okay, so let's get started. Let's what do you see as the top three business policy issues facing the state of Kansas in this coming year? I think uh, the probably the number one is our high taxes, our high property taxes. We've spent so much locally in our local communities that we've got our property taxes really high and you know it's burning burdensome to a lot of the seniors, the elderly, and just the everyday users. So we need to have more transparency there. We need to look for ways uh, for savings. And I think really from top to bottom in all of government, we need to really spend some time. And I think this, with the issues we got going on, will help us uh, look for some savings from top to bottom and, and efficiencies. Uh, them are some of the things we need to work on. We need to also figure out uh, how to get this, uh, you know, the businesses all open, 100% capacity. You know, I mean, I was in a restaurant yesterday and they, they couldn't make change. I mean, because they just didn't have it. Uh, you know, there's so many, you know, I was talking to a car dealer yesterday and he normally has 150 trucks on the lot and he's got 10 and them are the 10 that are the, the most, least desirable vehicles. You know, we've got to, we've got to figure out how to get everything opened up and 
and people back to normal. I think that's the best for the mental health of Kansas. You know, COVID-19, we got to take it serious, but I think we've got to, uh, we, we can't just shut the whole state down. We need to attack it where it's at and keep the rest of the state running. Uh, it really put us behind on tax revenue, which will stress our businesses out as they have to pay higher taxes in the future or, you know, whatever might come because of that. So, uh, and I, I think the next struggle we have is what next year looks like um, because I think you'll see a large number of businesses go out of business and that's my biggest concern. So I think we need to look at, for some policies to maybe uh, work with the governor and the president to uh, re-amortize some loans, a lot, work with the banks to um, stretch some of these loans out so these businesses don't have to shut down. Uh, we're gonna have to work with the business community because we went through one of the most unnormal times uh, ever in history. And, uh, you know, we can't expect these businesses to be making all these payments and not have any revenue coming in. Uh, they're gonna go broke. And that's why I think it's more important we get to state open than anything. Because, uh, and, and I think there's a new normal. You know, people are gonna be doing more uh, stuff from home remote um, businesses are going to be more remote. You're going to see strip centers go vacant. Uh, it, things are going to change because of this. And we need to get it as quick as, back, as we can back to normal. I don't know if that answers your three questions. It, it does. And that's a good segue because you talked about a lot of the challenges the state's facing. And one is how would you propose to balance the state budget? What specific budget cuts would you support and what revenue enhancements would you consider, if any? Well, I think we've got to look at uh, ways to, you know, um, target our cuts. Um, I don't know. I mean, we got to probably as we get back there as a whole, it's easy to say we can cut this or we can cut that. Uh, we need to, you know, I think the thing is we need to, get revenue going again um, more than uh, look at the cuts right now. I think uh, right now uh, you got, you have the mass order in about 15 counties. The other 85, or I'm sorry, the other 90 counties are running a hundred percent now. We need to figure out how to get them other 15 back up to hundred percent. That's going to bring more revenue in and close that shortfall. Uh, there are going to have to be some things uh, where we uh, make some cuts, but I think them are going to be next year. Uh, I'm not proposing any revenue enhancements. Uh, I'm not proposing Robin Capers or KDOT or any of them. I think we need to either make some cuts or some tough choices. Uh, look for where we can save. Um, and, and then we've got to get uh, if, if we don't figure out how to get these businesses back open, there's just going to be more revenue shortfalls in the future. Um, you know, we had an economy, it was one of the strongest economies ever, and we kept spending. And I, I told people before we left, we were going to have this large shortfall and let's make some cuts now on the budget. You know, we, we could have pill, uh, rolled some of the spending back and we didn't do that, we're going to have to do that uh, going forward. It's the economy, the money's not going to be there for the large increases and uh, the large spending. You know, we don't need to put any new programs out there right now. We need to get back to the basics. Uh, there's going to have to be some hard decisions made, uh, but when we get back, we'll have to do that as a legislative body and debate it, which are the best and which aren't. So. Great. Okay. So what would you do to grow and develop the state's workforce? Um, you know, I'm always been pretty active at looking at ways of growing. Um, you know, we've passed a, a series of bills of low interest loans for small businesses. Uh, a lot of the COVID-19 ones would uh, fit into that. Um, I think, uh, them are, you know, all the surrounding states around us use their idle funds to loan back to small business for low interest loans. 
uh, we're the only state in the middle of all the states around us that don't. Missouri has about 800 million. I think we've got to look at some tools like that to invest. Uh, you know, we, you know, the ag community seems to like it's doing better. So we need to see where there's some, you know, make some tweaks and help them out. Uh, we've got to, you know, figure out how to, uh, you know, get more jobs up here. I think the, the Botech training, uh, our colleges are doing a really good job at producing the workforce, you know, for insurance companies and, and, you know, working with security benefits and some of these, uh, big businesses, uh, you know, we're turning out more engineers, uh, you know, through, you know, some of the programs we put together. Uh, so I think we just need to expand on them. Uh, my biggest concern is though all that, uh, really won't help if we don't get this economy back to ticking. I mean, the back to the interaction transactions, they're so important to your members, your small businesses here in Olathe, uh, you know, you can't run a business on 50% capacity. Uh, that means states getting 50% of the revenue it was from sales tax, but it's probably not getting any income tax because that business is losing money. And it's only a matter of time before that business goes out of business. Uh, we've got to get them back to 100% capacity. Uh, you know, this is a bad thing that's happened, but as a country, we cannot just shut down. And so we need to work together to get through this, but we need to attack the problem where the problem is, not where it isn't. And, uh, you know, so we got to get back to normal. So talking about getting back to normal, K through 12 is something that we focus on at the state level quite a bit. Can you tell us what your views are on funding K-312? Well, you know, we've been under uh, now, uh, we, we've got a, a four-year plan that we've moved forward on and I've supported it. I think we're on track. Uh, the courts deem the four-year plan sufficient and I, I think we're sufficient on the funding. I'm a little concerned about, you know, last quarter, they probably should have some excess revenue uh, that, you know, the schools weren't open, um, you know, so could they help the state with some of the shortfall with, uh, you know, there should be some money there or maybe take a little less this year because of the excess revenue not having one quarter of a school year, uh, you know, there had to be some savings there. And so, you know, we need them to, to help us through this because they're the largest uh, piece of the budget. You know, we spend about 60 cents of every dollar on education that comes through the state general fund. And, you know, there are also our property tax, uh, you know, Johnson County is around 65% goes to education. So, uh, you know, without, you know, the facilities open last year, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping there's some savings there uh, that maybe we can address um, and, and, you know, recover some of that money. I'm guessing, you know, one of the places too is online sales. I think it's been going crazy. Uh, so I, I think we're gonna, our, our sales tax on online sales because even though they don't have to collect it, uh, Amazon and a lot of the big box stores do, so that should generate a little extra revenue too. So, yeah, I'd say just stick with the you know the plan, and I think it's sufficient for right now. I support it and supported the bill, and uh, you know keep increased funding for education. Well, let's shift a little bit about growing the economy. What type of economic development policies will you support to encourage job growth and business expansion in Kansas? You know, I'm, I don't have a problem with incentive financing. I think it's only smart uh, to take a piece of the tax revenue that you would have gotten and, and put it back in the project. It's gonna, if it's going to create jobs, you know, you're going to have FICA tax pay, you're going to have sales tax on goods a lot of times. Uh, you know, there's multiple other taxes that you will collect. So 
giving some property tax back. Uh, normally, like uh, I like to tell people, if you are getting fifty dollars over twenty years for forty acres, or so you know, uh, you know, when you build houses on it, if you can give some of that back, and what you know, your first year one house will net you more property tax than that twenty years did. So, uh, if we can, you know, do some incentivizing investments for development, I'm all for it. But we just got to make sure it's a win-win. And that we're going to, you know, the city's going to win, everybody's going to win uh, out of the deal. Um, you know, I don't know, I'm not for 100% uh, uh, incentives. I'm for, you know, uh, definitely like a 50% incentive, but it, it needs to pay out in 15 or 20 years, and then it needs to start paying out every year after that. And it not needs to not be a cost to the city currently or any government. So I definitely support incentivizing. They're, you know, um, trying to bring businesses to Kansas. I definitely support that, creating more jobs in any way we can. Um, you know, I used to be part of a bank here, set on bank board. And one of the things we did was, uh, you know, we worked with a lot of businesses in the beginning and, and you know, uh, they grew a lot. You you work with them and, and put a business plan and and uh, you know it's the same way uh, growing our state. I think we've got a, a new commerce secretary that seems uh, pretty good about trying to bring businesses to the state. But you know I think the high property tax is the biggest thing that hurts the state. So we need to figure ways to reduce that property tax. I think that'd probably be a, another way to attract a lot of businesses. Uh, so I don't know if that answers. Okay. Okay, we're gonna move on to healthcare. What are your views on healthcare policy and Medicaid expansion in Kansas? Yeah, I, I don't I don't support Medicaid expansion. Um, last year, I think we passed a great bill is the uh, health benefit plans, uh, Food Farm Bureau, uh, also some small group plans uh, that I, I think you know with the ACA and the high costs of healthcare, it's went up about uh, 230%. One of the drivers is, uh, you know, we talk about Medicaid expansion. Well, uh, you know, who pay, the state pays 25%, who pays that other 75? It's the existing um, policy holders that buy their health insurance through their work. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why we've seen our premium skyrocket. These are Able body um, uh, Kansans that could get it through other methods. I like the health benefit plan. I think it provides good health benefits. Um, you know that we passed. You're gonna. I think they said we'd see in the first year about forty-two thousand. I think that's that's a low number. I think you're gonna see a lot more Kansans. Uh, you know, use that. It's it's about sixty percent of what you would pay for the ACA for healthcare. So I think it's more affordable. I think um, I think small group plans. I, I think you know ACA really hurts small businesses and uh, individuals. You know ranchers, farmers, small business people that are you know 10, 15 people or less. And I think some of these other options that we passed last year are better. I think if you go expanded uh, Medicare, I think what you'll have is uh, your premiums will just keep doubling and you know today the premiums are so high and you have these high deductibles you're basically a lot of people are going broke uh, because most of the time they never uh, meet the deductible and so the insurance really pays very little I mean if you have a massive heart attack or you're in the hospital for 30 or 40 days, the insurance is pretty good, but everybody's paying so much out of pocket. And I think with, uh, you know, what's going on with how they uh, increase the premiums to pay for that 75%, you're having all these, you know, the rural hospitals, the cost of service is three times what it would be up in, you know, the larger cities. And I think, 
it's it's driving the little hospitals out of business. Uh, the expansion would put the rest of them out of business. Um, with you know, people couldn't afford the insurance, and uh, you don't have enough people with uh, paying insurance to pay you know the bills. Okay. Next question, we're gonna move on. What are your views on state tax policy? Yeah, I'm a fiscal conservative. I mean, I, I believe that um, we shouldn't take any more than we need. I said on legislative post audit, there's a lot of times, uh, you know, we find a lot of savings, but it never gets fixed. I mean, um, I think in this state right now, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of things we could do to save money. Um, we're not doing that. Um, we, we're not operating our budget like the individuals do. Uh, I've tried to fight uh, all these tax increases, all these spending increases. Um, you, you know, I don't know too many people in their personal budget that you know spend eight, nine, ten percent growth every year. It just doesn't happen. And you can't sustain it, and that's why, uh, you know, the some of the the different legislators have robbed the the capers and and the different funds, uh, and then put these loans uh, um, put the loans together to pay it back. And you know, it's always great when everything's working fine, but now you've got a bump in the road, and they're going to want to reamortize capers. And, you know, we wonder why the payments are so high. It's because we keep robbing Peter to pay Paul. We're not paying our, our bills and uh, in the good times even. And so now we got a bump in the road and they're going to have to reamortize. They're going to try to reamortize it, I guarantee it. Uh, but uh, I think we need sound fiscal policy with good growth. And uh, we don't have that here. I think. The problem is um, we need a policy that grows jobs across the state, rural and large cities alike, um, you know, like the president's put out. And I, and I think there's so much more we can do. We need lower property taxes in the state. And I think, um, you know, the tax revenue will come in that we need. I think uh, we haven't done, you know, the growth side. You know, we're a state that, 50 years ago, we had uh, six U.S. congressmen, and now we're down to four, heading towards three. We're not keeping up with the rest of the country on our population growth, and the reason is that there's no jobs here. We're not growing, the, outpacing the growth of jobs from the national average. People are going other places, and that's putting pressure on property taxes because when you have a declining population, um, then, then you have a bigger property tax burden, uh, a one to two percent burden every year, and so, um, you know, that's my opinion. Good, good uh, tax policy is let's grow the economy at a record pace, but I don't see anybody that really has come up with anything in the state, especially in the rural parts of the state, to grow it, um, but. I don't support tax increases. Um, I think, you know, the last one they passed in uh, uh, 2017 was they had about $1.2 billion plus about another 800 bar, uh, million borrowing from CAPERS and, and PMIB and um, uh, from transportation. I didn't support that bill. And my opponent said he would have supported that bill. So that's probably one difference I would have from my opponent. Um, I, I think that's reckless spending and, you know, that's helped get us to this point where we're at, uh, out of control spending, so. That's the perfect segue into the final question I have for you. And that is, what do you believe most distinguishes you from your opponent in this race? Well, you know, I've, I've supported economic development uh, in, in a lot of different fashions. I've supported business in a good tax environment for businesses. Also trying to lower property taxes at every turn as I ran an amendment 
last year just to freeze property taxes at at the 2019 or the low, lowest uh, number, and that didn't pass, but I tried, uh, consistently uh, tried to, you know, help uh, our, our Kansans, our businesses, uh, you know, with if it's, if it's uh, you know, working with our colleges to have uh, better, better education tools for our businesses to, to uh, have people coming out that's more qualified to for the business sector or you know the votech schools which i think that's definitely an area where we can expand uh much greater yet um i think we you know we've done a lot of work there but i think that's a good place to put more money but i've just tried to be a friend to the taxpayer the person paying the bill i tried to be a fiscal hawk and not waste money it's not my money it's everybody's money um and you know try to you know uh, manage the best we can i now my opposition he says he's pro-life he says he's second amendment i've i've repeatedly voted pro-life i've repeatedly voted second amendment i've repeatedly voted against tax increases uh I, and not only that I, I spoke on the senate floor listen to the speeches i've given the last two years so i've got a pro growth business uh, plan and I voted against these big tax increases the property tax I think the worst tax ever is uh, the food sales tax this governor had an opportunity and a plan to repeal the food sales tax she had an opportunity to allow people from from 12,700 to 24,000 because of the Trump tax plan to allow them people to itemize and she vetoed that bill them are not rich people. Them are people at the bottom that need, you know, it's just a couple hundred bucks to them. It's not a lot to some people, but it is a lot to other people. And, uh, you know, I think that's part of what we're missing. We don't have people caring about the people at the bottom. You know, a lot of people say they do, but I don't see the actions on the Senate floor. You know, when you got opportunities where you can pass allow them to itemize now they get a tax increase because uh trump changed the standard deduction from twelve thousand seven hundred to twenty four thousand uh last year they got a tax increase of 200 from the state of kansas we tried to run them that bill to allow them to itemize at twenty four thousand, and uh, just the way they changed the federal tax code automatically got a tax increase and the governor vetoed it the democrats all um you know voted against it that was right for kansans especially the ones at the bottom they're not rich they need uh they need uh us to work for them and quit working for the next big program or figuring out a way to spend the money so i don't know everything but uh you know i love this district i've enjoyed helping thousands of people uh, i could probably play i don't know hundreds if not thousands of videos if if uh, i could get them all together but i enjoy this job but i, I look forward to doing it another four years uh if possible if the people vote for me well senator olson thank you for participating today thank you for joining us i truly appreciate the service that you've given us and appreciate you being a part of our public policy council um, voter ed education efforts. I do want to remind everybody that um, advanced voting has begun and the primary is August 4th. The polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, again, visit www.votejoco.com for any questions you might have on candidates. Again, thanks so much, Senator. We appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good day, Natalie. You too.